welcome to another video. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to evaluate limits. Okay, so usually you're told that what is the limit of this function as x approaches a certain number? So, there are some extreme cases you can have. You have x is approaching a number, a rational number that you know, or x is approaching infinity or negative infinity. Well, this video will be about just rational numbers. That's where we're going to constants. Okay, infinity is not a constant, so all the numbers you see here, you can see them, they're all constants, and that's the case I want to deal with. Um, limits like this are very easy to take care of because, you know, you can do direct substitution. So every time you get a limit, the first thing to do is to do direct substitution. Forget about what you know, because sometimes the question could be easier than you think. You're trying to think, oh, how am I going to do this? But the instructor has just put a number that you can substitute and see what you get. So, for example, look at this number five. If we try to take the limit of this expression, I would not waste my time because this is a polynomial. I'm never going to have a problem with it, okay? So I'm just going to substitute 3 in here using the limit law, okay? Uh, there are limit laws that said that the limit of this entire expression is the limit of this minus the limit of this plus the limit of this minus the limit of this, just using those signs. That's the limit law. So if we start with this example, number 5, I'm going to substitute 3 here. Let's just do it. So this is number 5. It says... You should find the limit as x goes to 3 of 5x cubed minus 3x squared plus x minus 6. So what I'm going to do, if I apply the limit law to this, okay, um, it just simply says that this is the same thing as the limit as x goes to 3 of 5x cubed minus the limit. I know it's a lot of writing, but that's how mathematicians write, okay? It will be the limit as x goes to 3 of 3x squared plus the limit as x goes to 3 of x minus the limit as x goes to 3 of 6. Okay, now because this is a constant, you can always move it back. Move it to the back, okay? You're going to have this to be 5 times the limit as x goes to 3 of x cubed minus 3 times the limit as x goes to 3 of x squared plus the limit as x goes to 3 of x minus the limit of 6 as x goes to 3. Now, we can do our substitution, okay? So at this point, x is going to 3. So by the time it gets to 3, this is going to be 3 cubed, and that's 27. So what you have left will be 5 times 27 minus, this is going to be 3 times 9, this is going to be plus 3. And minus, well, the limit of a constant. So the good thing about constants is they never change. That's why they call them constants. It doesn't matter what x is approaching. If it's a constant, it's constant. So it's the same number you see here, which is going to be 6. Okay, let's evaluate this. If you want to punch this into a calculator or do whatever you want to do, by the time you're done with this, you'll know that this is going to be 105. Okay, so that's how this works. Okay, so this is basically um, what you do in evaluating limits. The only time there's going to be a problem putting the number straight into your limit is if at the end of the day, you're going to end up with 0 divided by 0, especially when you have rational expressions like this. If you end up with 0 over 0, well, you can't write 0 over 0 because this is meaningless. This is the indeterminate form of anything. Okay, so you can't have 0 over 0, but it is a big evidence that you can use algebraic manipulation to find your answer. So every time you do direct substitution and you get 0 over 0, you should say, yes! <laughs> okay. It's not over, because there's something else you can do. You can factor, you can rationalize, you can collect like terms, you can do so many things, okay? But you know that you're still going to get an answer. You just need to keep working. So let's move on to the first example that has to do with this. So I'm going to give this a check. That is done. The limit is 105. Let's go to the next one. It should be this one. So this is the next question, this one. And x, as x goes to negative 3, you have this function. We want to know what the limit is. Well, let's start with direct substitution. I'm going to plug in, remember that's the first thing to always do, direct substitution, okay? I'm going to plug in negative 3 here, well this is going to give me 9, because this is going to become positive when you square. So that's 9, and this is going to be 3 times negative 3, that's minus 9. Oh, that's going to be 9 minus 9 divided by, this is going to be 9, this would be plus 3, this would be minus 12. So I end up with 0 over 0. So 0 over 0 is meaningless, and it's not the limit of any expression, so I, that's not the limit, I'm not done. But I'm glad, I'm glad that I've got 0 over 0 because there's a definite answer. So the first thought in your head when you have a rational expression is to ask, can I factor something out in the top that I can also factor out in the bottom? The answer is almost always a yes. Okay, 
So let's see if there's something we can factor out. I'm going to take this out. So if we factor this, you're going to be right and say the limit as x goes to negative 3 of this expression now will be x factored into x plus 3. And then under, what would you get? Well, if you know your factoring very well, you know that x minus 4 and x plus 3 will be the factors of this expression. Okay, you need to clean up your factoring skills, okay? So this is going to be x minus 4 and x plus 3. Okay, so at this point, I can take these out and rewrite this expression as the limit as x goes to negative 3 of, let's say I have cancelled this and this. What is left will be x over x minus 4. Now I can take the limit, applying limit laws. Remember the limit law says that if it's rational, is the limit of the top divided by the limit of the bottom, okay? And I, I just want to write it, okay? So this is going to be the limit as x goes to negative 3 of x divided by the limit as x goes to negative 3 of x minus 4. Okay, so what's the limit of this? Well, we can break this also, but I don't want to keep writing, okay? Now, what's the limit as x of this as x goes to negative 3? Well, your answer is going to be negative 3. What's the limit as x goes to negative 3 of this expression? This is going to be negative 3 minus 4, that's negative 7, which is going to be 3 over 7. So the limit of this expression is 3 over 7. You see what we did? The only extra step to take is to factor the top and the bottom and cancel out whatever is common. Let's go to the next one. Now, this next question is special, and I want you to pay attention to it. Okay, it's special. And if you master this, you won't have a problem with some other limits you'll be taking that will give you this kind of situation. So remember, the first thing to do is to do direct substitution. So if I put um, my 4 here, this is going to be 16. Okay, this is going to be 16 plus um, 3 times 4 is 12. Okay, over, this is going to be 16 minus 4 minus 12. Okay, it looks like the top is going to be 28. And the bottom will be 16 minus, oh, that's going to give us a 0. This is not 0 over 0, so I can say yes. This answer here shows I'm going to go to infinity, okay? So a number or a constant divided by zero is not, undi is not um, indeterminate, it's just undefined. So this situation at this point is undefined, okay? Which means we cannot really say uh, that we've got an answer, okay? But we need to check. If something is undefined, it is either going all the way here or it's going all the way here on the number line, or it's going all the way up, or it's going all the way down, we really don't know, okay? So, but in order to investigate, there's something about limits you have to know. Um, because 28 over 0 is going to give you infinity. And at, at this point, okay, it is positive infinity that it looks like you're going to get. Okay, but what usually happens when you get infinity in a limit after doing sub direct substitution is something like this. Let's say you have a graph that comes this way. Uh, let's say it goes this way. It goes this way. Um, I'm trying to find a good way. The graph goes this way. As it's approaching this point, it then decides to go up to infinity. Well, we could as well just conclude if it has only one side. What happens when you go from this side to this side? Does the graph go like this? Because if both of them, as they approach this point, go in the same direction, then you can say, well, it doesn't matter whether you're coming from the left or from, from the left or from the right, the limit is going toward positive infinity. So positive infinity is the limit at this point. However, there are some graphs where it goes up on this side, but when you get here, it actually comes all the way down here and starts going this way. I'm sure you've seen graphs that look somehow like that. Now, because this way, as you're coming toward this point from the left, it's going down, but here it's going up. It's, okay, so what exactly is the limit? But it depends on which direction you're coming from. And once you start saying it depends, you say, forget it. The limit does not exist. So once you get infinity straight from direct substitution, the next step to take is to say, I'm going to investigate what the limits will be if I'm just before that point or if I'm just after that point. If both of them point me in the same direction, positive, then the limit is positive infinity. If both of them point me down, then it's negative infinity. But if one goes right or one goes positive, the other goes negative then the limit does not exist because you can't really make up your mind. you got to make up your mind. So let's do that for this question. So I just added undefined to this, okay? So now you know. So what investigation do we need to do at this point? You're now going to do this. You're going to say, 
Let us compare. Okay, we're going to compare the limit as x approaches 4 from the right. This is how you write it, from the right. It doesn't mean it's positive, okay? It just means you're coming from the right, the right-hand side, okay? Um, we're going to compare the limit of this expression, um, x squared plus 3x over x squared minus x minus 12, with the limit as x approaches 4 from the left, from this side. Okay, maybe I should even put left here so it's easier to imagine, okay, and put right here, okay, and you have, what's the number? x squared plus 3x over x squared minus x minus 12. Okay, now listen to this. There are too many terms. Is there a way you can simplify? Remember, this same expression is what we used in the first example here, okay? So if, if it's possible for you to reduce it, reduce it. If it's not, just work on it and get your answer out, okay? But I would reduce it because it makes life a lot easier. So if I compare these two, what I'm gonna have will be the limit as x goes to four from the left. Um, oh, I remember we had, when you simplify this, we're gonna have this over x minus four, okay? And we're gonna compare to this, the limit as x goes to four from the right of x over x minus four. Because you'll be approaching four from the left, you'll be picking a number that's slightly less than four. So. 3.9999999999 minus 4. Well, it's going to be minus 0 0.0000. You get that. So you're going to get a negative number. Then you're going to be dividing that number, 3.9999999999999, whatever it is, by a negative tiny number. You're going to end up with a number that's approaching infinity, but negative infinity. Remember, this would be positive over negative. You're going to get negative infinity. Just keep it. Let's go here. Now we're coming to four from the right on the number line, so that number must be bigger than four. So you're gonna have 4.0000001. I'm just stopping there because I can say too many zeros. And then here it's gonna be 4.0000001 minus four. Well, the answer, you're gonna get an answer, which is gonna be positive. It's gonna be that number divided by 0, 0.000, but positive. So everything you get here will, will approach infinity, but it will be positive. So the limit that you get as you approach Four from the left is negative. The limit that you get as you approach four from the right is positive. And that explains that once the limits are not the same, the limit does not exist. Okay, and that's it. So you say, saying the limit as x approaches four from the left is not equal to the limit as um, x approaches four from the right, you say, the limit does not exist. That's it, that's the explanation for this. So remember, you must do this every time you get an undefined expression from direct substitution. And that's why your first step is direct substitution. And once you're done with that and you get undefined, well, you have to do this. Take a limit just before and just after. Just take care of the signs. Once the signs are the same, you're good. If the signs are different, the limit does not exist. And you don't have to go into the 0, 0.000. You could, you could as well just do, just make sure you're safe. You could do 5, because I could have used 5. 5 divided by 5 minus 1, that's going to be positive 5. And here I'm going to take, sorry, I'm going to take 3 here. Here I'm going to take 5. You'll find out that you can easily get the answers by using numbers. It's just safer for you to be closer, because some numbers could give you false results. Okay, and that's it. So um, let's go to the next exercise, which will be this one. Okay, this is question number three. Well, number four, number three, but it's the fourth one. Okay, um, from what you see on the board, we're going to start with direct substitution. So I'm going to put two here. So this is four times two, that's eight. Eight plus one is nine. So I have the square root of nine, which is three. Three minus three gives me zero. Huh. This top is, it's not a problem, so don't stop here. Because if you get zero over four, your answer is zero. That's the limit. Okay, so you just have to go down here and say, if I put two here, that's two minus two, that's zero, okay. So now that I have zero over zero, you say yes, because I can just think of what algebraic manipulation can I use so that I can just get my answer. Well, anytime an expression, especially a rational expression, even if it's not rational, any limit you're taking, that direct, sub direct substitution gives you something you can't figure out. Try to multiply that by the conjugate of the surd that you have. So this is a surd. Uh, this is, the expression on top is a surd, so what you want to do is take the conjugate and multiply the top and bottom by the conjugate. So this is going to be the same thing as the limit as u approaches 2 of the square root of 4u plus 1 minus 3 over u minus 2 
multiply by the conjugate of this, which is how to do the square root of 4u plus 1 plus 3. That's the only thing that changes. You multiply this by itself, but instead of using plus, I mean minus, you'll be using plus in this case. And you also divide by the same thing. So this is how to do the square root of 4u plus 1 plus 3. So that's it. Now, we're going to multiply. Let's go. This implies the limit as u goes to 2. If I multiply this by this, the square root sign will disappear, and what I have left will be 4u plus 1. Okay? Then, if you've done this several times, you'll notice that to multiply this by this, it should give you plus 3 this. Let's write it. Plus 3 into 4u plus 1 in the square root sign. Okay? Let's take this out. And then you multiply this by this, you get minus 3 square root of 4u plus 1. Okay? And then this times this gives you minus 9. All that divided by. Now what I strongly recommend is don't waste your time trying to distribute whatever is under. Okay? Just put them side by side. U minus 2 multiplied by the square root of 4u plus 1 plus 3. Okay? Don't distribute the bottom because whatever is causing the trouble, which is usually this, is going to be eliminated. So don't waste your time distributing the bottom part. Leave it, just distribute the top. Based on what we've got here, we know that we can cancel this out. So at this point, we're going to collect what's on top. It's going to be 4u plus 1 minus 9. That's going to be 4u minus 8. So we're going to have the limit as u goes to 2 of 4u minus 8. And then under, we still have u minus 2 multiplied by the square root of 4u plus 1 plus 3. Okay. And if we continue this journey, we can factor out 4 here. And then we're going to be left with 4 into, oh, let's put the limit. So we're going to have the limit as u goes to 2 of 4 into u minus 2 over u minus 2 multiplied by the square root of 4u plus 1 plus 3. Okay, so at this stage again, we can cancel this. Remember I told you this will always be cancelled out. That's why we didn't distribute. So don't distribute it. So this, we're going to cancel this out. And what you have left will be the limit as u goes to 2 of 4 over the square root of 4u plus 1 plus 3, which will be 4 over, if we put u here, you're going to have 4 times 2, 8, 8 plus 1 is 9, okay, that will be the square root of 9 plus 3, which will be 4, over 6, which will be 2 third. So that's the limit of that. Let's go to the last question. Okay, so this question presents a different kind of in indeterminate form, okay? See, we talked about 0 over 0. Well, it's the same thing as di dividing infinity by infinity. You can't divide infinity by infinity, and you cannot subtract infinity from infinity. Okay, and that's about what we have here. Because if we do direct substitution, this is going to be 1 over 0, which is going to be... Direct substitution will give us... Let's, let me just write it. I shouldn't write it, but so you see what I'm saying. Because 1 over 0 will be infinity. Minus. This is um, 0 plus 0 will give you 0. That's another 1 over 0. Infinity minus infinity should be what? See, that's a problem. So you cannot have, so you can't have these. You can have 0 over 0. You can have infinity minus infinity. You can't have infinity divided by infinity. These three are some of the things you must avoid. You can't have them. Okay. I have another video that explains what you can do with infinity, but just know that these forms, you can't have them when you're taking limits. Not allowed. And so the situation we have here is infinity minus infinity. Well, you know, the two are not exactly the same. So which of the infinities is bigger? And by how much is it bigger? You don't have an answer. So just go ahead and use algebraic manipulation. Let's do it. Okay. So I described this as indeterminate also. Now, what kind of manipulation? Can we factor? No. Yeah, we can factor out 1 over t, but it still doesn't help us. Okay, so uh, it doesn't help us because t is still under, and if you divide by 0, you're going to still get infinity, and it doesn't make any sense. So let's figure out what to do. So at this point, what I'm going to do is... That's it. You get it. It's going to be the lowest common denominator. You're going to put them together, get a single rational expression. See, right now we have two, but let's combine the two terms and have one single rational expression and life will be beautiful. Okay, so we're going to say this is the limit as t goes to 0 of, well, what's common here? It's going to be um, t squared, or we say t into t plus 1. 
Okay, because in fact of this, that's what you have, and that's how you know that it's a common denominator. Well, this is this, we're going to give you t plus 1, okay, minus this and this is going to be 1. Uh oh, that's so, so, that's so easy. Okay, so this implies the limit as t goes to 0 of, well, this is going to be t plus 1 minus 1, that's going to be t. I didn't even need to put this there, okay, this was not necessary. Okay, so this is going to be t plus 1 minus 1. I'm going to rewrite that. Okay, I rewrote it. Now, how do we simplify this? This is going to be t plus 1 minus 1, which gives you just t over t into t plus 1. This is going to cancel this out. So you're left with an expression, the limit as t goes to 0 of 1 over t plus 1, which is, at this point, 1 over, if we put t to be 0, that's 0 plus 1, that gives you 1 over 1, which is equal to 1. And that is the limit of this expression, just by combining the terms. So when this ever happens, that you have to do subtraction of two terms that give you infinity, infinity, remember that. Put the two terms together, look for a way to have one single rational expression, and life will be beautiful. I hope you learned something. If you did and you watched the video up to this point, make sure you give it a like. If you're not subscribed, just be subscribed. It's a good thing to do. Make sure you leave a positive comment in the comment section. I'll see you in the next video. Until then, don't stop learning, because those who stop learning have stopped living. Bye-bye.